and we are live. Good morning, everybody. It's your favorite truck driver in the whole wide world, ex-truck driver in the whole wide world. It's Bitcoin Ben here for the daily. What in the plot is going on in cryptocurrencies? Let me check everything here. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. all right, all right. Looking good, looking good. Yes, I actually, I do look pretty good today. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Everyone, get ready for a great show. Look at this. Notes from just last night. I am in a top secret location. I can't tell anybody. Now, the reason I'm in a top secret location is because if I tell everyone where I'm at, then you'll know where I'm at. And I have to keep the secrets of my trade. Now, grab your coffee and get ready, folks. Because what I'm what I'm going to explain in the first half hour is how BlackRock is 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 absorbing the majority of the Inflation Reduction Act money. So those bill, almost trillions of dollars is going right through BlackRock because BlackRock owns a majority of the companies that the government is going to pay for all of these uh, improvements, shall we say? We and the uh, the non-governmental organizations involved with the government, yeah, non-government organizations linked with the government. So are they really non-government organizations? No, they're absolutely government organizations. All this money is going to flow in. <clears throat> See, they keep on telling us that the inflation's dropping. Well, in certain sectors, that is true. But it's the plumbing of the system, right? Let me put it this way. Imagine you have on all of your faucets and the main supply into your house is feeding all of all of your faucets and you go in to your daughter's room and you shut off the faucet a little bit and there's only a trick right so in her bathroom there's lower inflation of water going through her faucet. But in the kitchen and in the laundry room and in the other bathrooms, they're still receiving a full flow of inflation. See, the only the only inflation that they want 
is into the systems they want to inflate. The retail economy is what they want to drop the inflation on. Only retail. The governmental and the corporate inflation, they want that going. Because the corporate inflation has several different uh, outlets where retail inflation basically goes like food and rent. That's the majority of retail inflation is food and rent. Well, if you're shutting if you're lower, lowering the amount of, of inflation to retail, but all of the others, the governments, the NGOs, the banks, if all of those are actually being recapitalized with the inflation, see, they're not going to let any banks fail. But they'll let individuals fail. There were twice as many bankruptcies this year as there were last year in individuals and small business. Now, that's because the, uh, we, uh, remember the, uh, the checks that they were sending out directly from the government to the people, the COVID stimulus checks, that's, that's the, original source of the inflation and the unemployed unlimited unemployment all the money they were printing in 2020 that's what has been pushing retail of groceries and, uh, and autos and stuff like that well that's going bye-bye. That's going bye-bye. But the inflation for road construction, high, uh, airport construction, all these other entities, the inflation's coming from the government. Do you know that they haven't even sent out a five percent of the Inflation Reduction Act money. They haven't even sent out five percent yet. And that money is supposed to be spent over the next year and a half. You're going to see a jump in inflation, in asphalt, in, uh, in labor jobs. Labor jobs are going to skyrocket. Now, the labor jobs are actually tied to the influx of, uh, shall we say, not legal people. And, but also, this is going to mess with a lot of systems. But my point here is, BlackRock is about to receive, and a lot of BlackRock companies are about to receive an influx of capital 
that they've never seen before. We remember the Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> Don't you love how they call it what it ain't? <laughs> We're going to reduce inflation. Well, let's, uh, well, we are in a little way. We're going to reduce how much money you have, but we're going to pump a ton of money into these other things. So your wallet's about to get smaller, but corporate and banking wallets are about to get bigger. So this Inflation Reduction Act, which is, oh my God, it's so much money, so much money, is about to go in, into BlackRock and into, all right, a lot of these construction industries and a lot of of uh, construction supply energy uh, corporations. Not only that is is this is all part of trying to save the system because now remember the government is at a hundred. And I, I think 120% of GDP in uh, spending. So, or right at 100, 100, like we spend more than we bring in in taxes, right? We're way over that. Now, what that does is that actually puts, listen up, folks. This is what's important. This is part of the Great Reset. Is now the government is a larger majority than the retail the private sector, right? And the, now I'm talking about money they owe, right? The government owes more money than most of retail economy. So now, Every year, there's approximately 2% gain of profit. Let's just call it profit. That the whole U.S. will gain 2% of profit. Well, that 2% a profit is being eaten up by the government. So there is no way for the retail economy to grow because the, the retail private sector, the private sector is at a negative growth. That's called a recession. Right? We've been in a recession for a year and a half. Right? We, since March 2020, we've been in a recession. Now they've fudged the numbers and they've sent out absolutely with ridiculous numbers and said, eh, we're not in the world. Technically, well, technically we are. But 
the government's not in a recession. The private sector is in a recession. Because now all profitability is absorbed by the government and not absorbed by the private sector. So what does that tell you? All of the entities that are getting money from the federal government are going to get that chunk of growth money right now mind you they're printing more than two percent a year so that extra is inflation and when they remember less than five percent of just that one bill Now, that's not talking about all the other money that they're jacking up. We remember Social Security jumped up higher than ever before this year. They had to adjust, right? They had to adjust the Social Security payments to match the inflation rate. So they jumped to like 6%. That's why they were trying to hold inflation so low. Because now... And remember, retirees, they spend less money. The older you get, the less money you spend. The younger you are, that is a direct money injection into the economy. So... A lot of this extra 6% is going into investments and not into the uh, private sector. BlackRock, there's a reason BlackRock is doing it now. There's a reason the CEO a BlackRock is saying, oh, Bitcoin's the best thing since sliced bread, man. I've, I've always been a fan of Bitcoin. No, he just knows what I know. That the private sector is, they've, they've pushed out them and their government friends, right? They've pushed out the retail, right? How do we know that? They've actually pushed out the retail in cryptos. How do we know that? Because as of now, everyone in Bitcoin who purchased is in profit. Let me explain how. Because the majority who bought at 68 got scared out and sold. And those were bought at lower prices. So the loss is gone. Now, the and how do we know this? Chain analysis, right? There's software that runs over the Bitcoin blockchain 
And those analyses tell when the transaction happened. Well, if you have the date and the time of the transaction and the wallet address that it's leaving and entering, then you know. Now, you don't know who did it technically. You don't have an identity. But you do have a price and a time that they brought into the wallet and went out of the wallet. So we now know that most of the people who bought high have sold because they got frightened out of of the actual market. And now the majority of the people who are holding now are in the profit and the average purchase price is about 29 grand. That's a big deal because the majority of those people are not going to sell. See, they're anticipating a bull run. So they're not going to sell. They're going to huddle. And that's why we know we're at the bottom of the market. And that's what Black, BlackRock knows. Now, BlackRock, with their friends at the FEV, right? BlackRock and the SECs, like, okay, now... Let's bring in Coinbase. Let's bring in all these exchanges and rough them up. And let's put it out all over the media that we're roughing up the exchanges. All of that FUD is keeping any other retail investors out. Because... The average retail investor, they're not like us. They don't follow the market. They follow the trend. That's why they buy high, because they're not following the market, right? Hey, hit the like and subscribe, right, to the channel. Whatever, wherever you're watching, those over on Rumble, I'm telling you guys now, you need to join my locals community. On Rumble, things are coming, right? And make sure, right, after... I hang up on YouTube <laughs> in about seven minutes. I will be live on all the other, you know, I will continue the show on Rumble and all of the other channels. But after that, I, I, I'm doing an hour show on Patreon. Now, those watching from Patreon right now, you will not see a break. It'll just keep going. Right? I got a ton to talk about on Patreon today. Because here's just a hint, right? This is basically a breakdown of how right before the Civil War, right? They, they called the, the Civil War and what was coming after the Civil War, before the Civil War, guess what they called it? The Great Reset. Or the Great American Reset. Sound familiar? 
So I digress. But you want to join Patreon to hear this because that is broadcast on my private server. Nobody. That's my private server. So you watch it on my server. Now, and if you're on Patreon, you get a notification and you watch the whole two-hour daily show without interruption. It's just right there. Watch the whole thing on my private server. Now, the reason that this this is so important that BlackRock is getting into this and all these other major firms is they're, they're anticipating, right? They know what's coming. They have... They have about four years to accumulate the majority of the Bitcoin. There's a lot of people, well, relatively, there's a lot of people who, uh, who own one Bitcoin or under. Those people... The next bull run, mark my words, they're not going to be smart. They're going to see Bitcoin hit $100,000 and they're going to sell. And they're going to think they made out like bandits. They're going to go, holy cow, I bought at 29,000, 24,000, you know, 19,000. And it's going to hit on 100,000 and they're going to sell. And it, it's going to run up. See, the difference between all of these other havenings in this situation, BlackRock is never going to sell a Bitcoin they buy. Ever. Ever, ever. Ever, 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 ever. Because when their clients want to cash out, they're just they're just sending them cash. Because they're going to have an internal ledger, right? And they're going to have the reserve Bitcoin. They will always have a higher number of Bitcoin in their reserves then their clients are demanding the reason for that will be the internal mechanism of price right when when their clients purchase the etf package the price their clients are charged. And by the time that BlackRock can purchase it, that price might be slightly different. And they're going to have rollover Bitcoin. Right? When the price drops, BlackRock is going to buy. So, that when they, when they have a client purchase, they know they're selling them a, they are selling them a Bitcoin 
that they paid less for. Um, all right. Now, a quick word from the sponsor. You guys, you have to call Calix Solutions. This, you need a Liberty laptop. It is not an if, it's not a when, it's a now. Because if you watched the episode, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he had the number one white hack hacker in, in the world. And he warned everybody the biggest enemy you have is in your house. It's your laptop. It's your television. It's the electronics in your house are your biggest enemy. My friends, as we go through this, as we go through this, you're going to start to realize, right, that the problem is the technology. It's exactly like, remember, right before the our, as the Civil War happened, what was rolling out? The telegram. And, and transferring information along a wire. They, they can wiretap from then on out. And that's what the governments were doing during reconstruction. No, oh, right, I digress. Here's a word from the sponsor. Are you buying and selling cryptos on the same laptop that you're using to browse the internet, read your email, and visit social media sites? If so, you're exposing your cryptos to theft. Whenever you're online, you're at risk of getting hacked and having your identity stolen. How would you feel if someone stole all of your cryptos? What would that do to your finances? Guard your cryptos with a safe and secure laptop from Calix Solutions. Each laptop is set up just for you and your cryptos, and then we walk you through exactly how it works. Don't risk the security of your cryptos. Order a crypto laptop from Calix Solutions now to secure your crypto future. Learn more at calixsolutions.io. All right, YouTube, bye-bye. Everyone watching on YouTube, jump over and check us out on Rumble. We're just going to continue the show. It's right under here. Click the link. It'll take you right to it. Love you guys. All right. Now that we got those YouTube losers off here, now we can really be serious, right? Now we can talk about the SEC, right? The SEC and Gary Gensler. Remember, not everyone in these agencies are corrupt. Not everyone in these corporations are corrupt. It's usually just 